Soul Speak Living in Color, where we talk about inspirations, following your dreams, and what lights your fire. I'm your host, Sam Filia, Rainbow and Thunder voiceover. You can find me at samfiliavo.com. Welcome and thanks for listening to Soul Speak Living in Color. Today's episode is number five, and our guest today is Miss Aya Mariyama. So Aya is the head of casting for Sealy Siegel Management, and if you don't know what kind of job position that is or who Sealy Siegel Management even is, we'll go over that in just a minute. So. Aya being head of casting, she's like the negotiator. She deals with clients. She deals with us voice actors, sends us all these awesome auditions, um, helps us succeed in our careers, which is awesome. So you can find her Instagram at A Grace with two E's. So A G R A C E E 28. She has these awesome, adorable little piggies that I'm going to post pictures in the blog portion of this. Uh, once this is published. Um, if they run into the room, we might see them on camera, so stay tuned. <laughs> She's got a whole bunch of different things that she really enjoys. We're going to talk about some inspiring stuff. You know, what? how does she manage work-life balance? Um, why does she choose this job? Because this is not something that you get to hear about often. They're kind of behind the scenes, so I'm really excited to have someone tell us about it. So without further ado, Aya, hello. Thank you for joining us. Thanks so much for having me, Sam. Hello, hello. Um, like she mentioned, I'm Aya Mariama. I'm a head of casting at Sealy Siegel Management. Sealy Siegel Management is essentially a branding and marketing and management company specifically for voice actors. So Sam kind of gave a little bit of background as to what I do, but essentially I help manage our roster of talent, most of whom have graduated from Celia's branding programs. And um, yeah, a lot of what I do is creating opportunities for our talent, usually in the form of auditions that um, hopefully turn into jobs within our um, company. Um, I help our buyers find the perfect voice for their project. So whether it's for a commercial on the radio or a corporate demo video for a big company, um, podcast narrators, really anything in between. Um, I kind of take all the information from the creative directors, the producers, you know, male, female, young, old, you know, take all those ideas into consideration and essentially provide them with custom auditions for them to consider. Um, another part of my job is negotiating rates for the talent, which is a fun, uh, but tricky skill. You know, there's industry standard rates that are kind of set. Um, we use the GBAA as a launching point for most of it. Um, but just making sure that our talent are being compensated fairly for the usage of their voice. Um, and then, you know, marketing our talent, finding new buyers, um, yeah, are all part of what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. Which is all really fantastic. She's super great at what she does. I'm amazed at the rates that this woman is able to negotiate. It's, it's amazing. She's kept in with a standard. Um, so tell us a little bit about your background. How did you uh, find this role? Why did you start it? And what do you love about it? Ah, so I actually kind of fell into uh, voiceover and uh, talent management on this side. Initially, I went to school for um, music business. So my whole dream, you know, since I was a kid was to be an agent for artists and, you know, routing tours, concerts, festivals. Um, so it was kind of a pretty easy pivot. Um, I originally had a job as an agent assistant with Creative Artist Agency in Nashville. Um, but then in the wake of the pandemic, obviously concerts and festivals weren't happening. Um, and so I was really grateful to my mentor in college 
Kelly Buttrick, who is also a voiceover talent. So I worked with her for a few years and she actually introduced me to Celia. And, you know, we had a great initial phone call and, you know, she hired me that, that the next day. So, you know, um, in the year and a few months I've been with her, you know, I started off as a social media manager and kind of got promoted to head of casting and I've loved every minute of it. Um, it's been super fun kind of transitioning to this role. There is a lot of overlap with what I've learned for the music side of things, including business negotiation and, you know, client relations and all of that. So it was a pretty smooth transition. Um, I love that I can work remotely. Um, and yeah, I get to work with awesome talent every day and I really enjoy what I do. That's awesome. So you said you work remotely. Where, where in the world are you at? So I'm actually on the beach. So I recently moved um, a little north of West Palm Beach down in Florida. So got a beautiful Ooh. ocean view every day and you know, work from my balcony most days. Um, warm weather. Yeah, You're wearing a tank like top and wearing a sweater. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty warm. So yeah. awesome. So what are some uh, the what are some of the hardships that you face when you're trying to help talent uh, land their dream roles? Yeah, so this can be tricky. Um, obviously, we are always marketing and promoting our talent to a slew of different buyers. You know, we take into consideration what they're looking for, what genres they want to break into. Um, but sometimes the timing is just off, you know. Um, it's important to keep in mind that, you know, a no answer or, you know, a no doesn't mean that it's a missed opportunity it just means like not at this moment um and you know like some of our talent have really high aspirations like they want to be the voice of a disney princess and you know it takes some, <laughs> some time to get there but it's nice helping them you know doing what you can to help them so you know i was just on the phone a week or two ago with um a creative producer for disney plus and for the Disney Channel. And so maybe you can't be a Disney princess now, but you can do a trailer for a Disney princess movie, or you can do, you know, maybe a villain in a Disney spot, you know, so there's different stepping stones. So it's, so it's nice, um, you know, finding opportunities where they can so that they can get closer to these goals. Um, and yeah, so yeah, it's, it's tough managing expectations. It's tough, you know, trying to get talent to the point that they want to be but it's also important for them to know that like you know they've got a team around them a lot of it has to do with marketing a lot of it has to do with timing and that the more you can plant seeds the more you can improve that name recognition piece that's when that when that perfect job hits that's just right for you they're like oh yeah we know who we want for this um so yeah it's just all stepping stones patience and baby steps for sure yeah, I think over the last three years, patience is was not one of my virtues before then. I before I started a customer service role, um, I learned a lot of that in the last few years, and I think this has been the tip of the iceberg for me. <laughs> for sure, yeah, and it's hard in a freelance job position like voice acting. But it's so important to like keep doing it, especially if you love it. Like I've had so many people who are like just on the brink of giving up, just on the brink of, you know, maybe stepping away from Sealy Single Management. And then they land a $12,000 job or a $5,000 job or a national campaign for a company that they really love or a worldwide company, um, a worldwide campaign for a really big brand, you know, and then that's been the tipping, bur tipping point for finding agents and getting all these other things to help them reach their goals. So, you know, not a lot of it is, you know, persevering as well. And I think that is uh, a thing that goes for most creative businesses, because even in voice acting, you, it's going to be extremely hard to even perform if you're not really passionate about it. So, like, I mean, I, I custom built my booth, which I'm sure a lot of people have seen already, but I am super grateful to just be able to go in there, you know, five days a week and audition my little heart out. 
I put out as many as I possibly can, but you got to be picky. And it's the same thing with painting, drawing, any kind of creative thing. If you're an artist, you have to have a passion for it in order to keep going and ignore all of the selection, not rejection uh, parts about it. Totally. So, and a big part of that too is having a great brand. And, you know, that's something that we've helped Sam with. And like, we use that to promote the heck out of her and find her opportunities that are perfect for her hope streams goals in the view industry as well. So like making sure that you're marketing yourself and that you're letting people know who you are and what you do so that they can hire you. I is going to get me to be a Disney princess. That's my goal. <laughs> <laughs> so out of uh, this entire career that you have experienced over the last almost two years, what keeps you going through all of the, the pain and the doubt that, uh, that I know that you go through? What is the one thing that says, yes, this is so worth it? Just the wins, you know, like when you are listening to Spotify and you're like, oh my gosh, I put that spot, like that's so-and-so on our roster. <laughs> that is so cool. Or when you're watching, you know, the Super Bowl and we saw one of our talent, um, or one of our talent um, in one of the ads. Um, so that's always a really big win. And, you know, producing wins for the talent, you know, wins aren't all the same for everybody, you know, so a thousand dollar win for someone might be a huge accomplishment and just being able to share that with them and promote it where we can and use that as leverage for their career. Like that's super exciting too. Um, so yeah, I guess just like the sense of pride and joy and accomplishment that comes from seeing these talent that I know work so hard in terms of their branding and their craft and their coaching and investing in their demos and their audio booths, like seeing that pay off and knowing that, you know, I played a small part in that, like that's really exciting. So helping people create their own success. I love it. So let's talk about some other passions. I know you said you were, you live on the beach, you work from home. Um, what do you do? Like what, what are some of your hobbies? Yeah. So, I mean, I do work a lot because I enjoy <laughs> what I do. Um, but when I'm not, you know, I spend a lot of time on the beach, out boating. Um, I love traveling. Um, I love my animals. So, you know, I've always had lots and lots of animals and, you know, I've raised everything from orphaned pet, like, orphaned squirrels to mini pigs and, you know, dogs and cats <laughs> and all the regular animals too. Um, so those keep me pretty busy. Um, I enjoy reading and traveling, going to concerts, skiing. I'm a big skier. I love uh, diving. Uh, yeah, so lots of lots your of favorite? interest. So tell me about your your favorite place to to go skiing. Oh gosh, okay. So I water ski, not snow ski. I hate the cold, so I could never do the snow skiing thing. Um, yeah, water skiing. You know, just like different lakes around the nation. You know, with you know different friends and things like that so it's not more of a it's less of a destination thing than snow skiing but I was thinking um, snow skiing so thank you for pointing that out <laughs> all good um diving do you, is it scuba diving that you do yes so one of my um life dreams goals is to go scuba diving in the uh, Great Barrier Reef so I would love to do that um you know recently I guess not too recently a few years ago went scuba diving um on the southern french coast uh so that was just really beautiful uh i've been scuba diving in costa rica so lots of cool places but the um going to australia and doing that would be really awesome <laughs> you know I, i've seen pictures that when people go scuba diving it's absolutely gorgeous but for me i just i don't think i could do it i can't do deep ocean water <laughs> jellyfish and sharks even the thought of it i'm just mm, mm, all the creatures <laughs> But we had a, a, another guest, actually the first guest that I had, Miss Kayla Pitts. Uh, she also does scuba diving and she was uh, okay, cool. talking to me about some of the places that she's been and how she got into it. I think it's a really cool thing to do. Yeah, just the concept of like breathing underwater is awesome. <laughs> and that was one of the things that she was telling me too, that, that you have to kind of get over. It's because it's very instinctual to just not breathe at all when you're underwater. So you kind of have mm -hmm. to learn to trust that you can do that with a tank. <laughs> yeah. Very interesting. So 
what is something that you've always wanted to do, but you just haven't gotten there yet? Yeah, so I guess that Great Barrier Reef thing is one. Um, mm -hmm. I've always wanted to go see the Northern Lights. I actually had an Iceland trip planned uh, that got canceled um, due to the pandemic and it got postponed again. Uh, but hopefully I can make it over to Iceland um, to see the Northern Lights. I think that would just be really freaking awesome. <laughs> Wouldn't it? They have it in um, in Iceland and I think there's the Aurora Lights in Alaska, right? Yeah. Alaska, I think like parts of Canada, you can see it, but I've heard it's fun. all the really cold regions. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're bundling up for that, right? So. so you said you like to travel. Where have you been? Oh, gosh, I've been to lots of different countries. Um, go back to Japan a lot just because that's where um, some of my extended family live. Um, Guatemala, Costa Rica, Dominican Republic. Um, all over Europe, um, Prague, and Budapest are probably some of my favorite countries. Yeah, I think those are the big ones. You know, coast so of the, France the, is really lovely. Italy's nice. Um, my sister lives in Belgium. She's actually training for the Olympics in eventing, which is what? like a three-phase horseback riding uh, competition. Oh, cool. um, so we do pop over to Belgium every once in a while. And, you know, from there, it's super easy to get to the Netherlands and uh, Germany and France. Um, so traveled a bit around Europe as well. So, Man, that is the dream. I would <laughs> love to go travel anywhere. So great. So you said Buda, uh, Budapest is one of your favorite places? Yeah, Budapest and Prague, um, they're just a little, I mean, I guess they're getting more and more touristy now, but they're just a little bit off the beaten path. Just love the culture there. The food's really great, super cheap. Um, yeah, I, I got to experience it on a study, ab study abroad I did um, a few years ago in college um, and just really enjoyed the history, the architecture, the people um the whole scene was just really great <laughs> awesome let's let's wrap up here with any advice for uh creatives it doesn't have to be for voiceovers but for creatives that are really grinding and trying to be successful the ones that haven't hit that yet but they're you know face to the ground going after it totally um, obviously I think it's important to do something that you love. I mean, yeah, if you're going to do it every day, you might as well really love it and put your heart and soul into it. Something that really leans into your skills. I think is a good thing that sometimes gets overlooked. Like business negotiation was a class that I excelled in in college and like it's helped me create really big wins for my talent and I enjoy doing it, you know, like justifying it and just I don't know so finding skills that you love uh finding skills that you're good at that you can implement into something you love I think is important um having a team around you that you enjoy and that support you and um yeah it's so like Celia is that to me you know she's not only my boss but you know we call and we you know share photos with each other and you know she's like a friend <laughs> so so having a good team around you where you feel supported and um, trusted and um, yeah, I guess that perseverance piece is also really big. Like you don't, it's really hard to just get somewhere overnight. Um, but these are, you know, how I got to where I am now is based on things that I've been doing since I was 10 years old, you know? Um, so keeping your goals in mind and working towards them actively, you know, it's not a passive thing to excel in what you want to do um so kind of like you where you get up and you audition every single day as many auditions as you can um it takes that dedication and that grind um and putting in the effort in order to reap the rewards so I think hard work is as much of a part of it as talent I completely agree and I want to say you know if you're a creative out there doing whatever it is that you're doing you're not alone. You know, there are people who've got your back, like she was saying, build yourself a team, a supportive group. Um, if you're a multi-passionate person, 
maybe you could find a way to kind of integrate it all so that you don't have to focus on this one thing and then burn yourself out on it. It's very easy if you're grinding and going after and that's all that you're doing. It's super easy to burn out. And then totally. you're left with, I don't really want to do this anymore. Yeah. So taking the time for yourself is equally important. You know, I think nowadays where in the wake of the pandemic, we're all working or a lot of people are working remotely um, being able to set proper boundaries for yourself and not be working around the clock, but taking some time to just read a book and turn off your phone or, you know, take a walk or, you know, play with your pets, just things that bring you joy. Exactly. And don't forget to eat, please. <laughs> yes. I love eating. If I didn't mention that, food is great. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, restaurant recommendations, send them my Sushi. way. Sushi. So. <laughs> love it. <laughs> favorite food ever <laughs> and you know it's actually kind of funny I didn't I didn't like sushi until I started dating Eric my, my boyfriend right now about six years ago because I didn't want nothing to do with it raw fish ugh, no he had me try it about two or three years into our relationship and now I just cannot get enough of it <laughs> yeah I'm a big fan so thank you for joining us Aya I really appreciate you coming out here and uh, talking to everybody who may or may not know what you do and explained it in a way that everybody can understand. So that's awesome. And now they have a little bit more knowledge on how the casting process works and a little bit about who you are, the remote yeah. work from home type of jobs. So that's totally. Cool. Well, thanks so much for having me, Sam. This was a pleasure. <laughs> All right. I uh, have a wonderful day, everybody. I will see you next week. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>